of course Christians hate us. Of course they do. To you, to you Christians that don't hate Jews, I like tip my hat to you because if I was raised on the New Testament, if that's all I read and I read nothing else, I would hate me. Uh, Doc Pleromonat, thank you for the super chat. He says, Jewish indifference to Jesus versus gospel projected perversion of rejecting the message. I'll probably have to repeat this question, by the way. Um, <clears throat> seems ahistoric. If the law was kept and Romans were appeased, why care about a smattering of converts? So I'll read it again. Jewish um, indifference to Jesus versus gospel projected perversion of rejecting the message seems a historic if the law was kept and romans were appeased why care about a smattering of converts there are 89 chapters in the gospels four of them are infancy narratives two luke two matthew matthew's infancy narrative those two chapters are i can't say the most outrageous but really the they're, they're really quite outrageous the jews would have an aversion to it because Matthew engages in so many, this is the, the kindest, if you're a young man or a young woman, do not do what Matthew does. That's not the way to behave. I'm just, it's, it's important to be honest. Matthew is engaging in complete corruptions of the Jewish scriptures, and he's also lying to his, he's lying to his audience. Where do you begin? Uh, so let's lock this up really quick. Uh, Matthew begins with, this is the genealogy of Jesus Christ, son of David, son of Abraham. Okay, And he proceeds through verse 16 to give us the whole list of the link from, it's really Joseph's genealogy. So if Jesus was born a virgin, it's not even relevant. It's one of the crazy elements. of This is the least of the problems. But the moment you introduce the notion that Jesus was born to a virgin, that means that Joseph was not Jesus' father, and Joseph's genealogy then becomes irrelevant. So we're actually presented with a putative genealogy of Joseph, and it's irrelevant to Jesus because G Joseph wasn't Jesus' father. Let's just put that all aside. In verse 17 of Matthew chapter 1, the author states that this is not an arbitrary collection of names, but there are actually three sets of 14 generations, from Abraham to David, and that is 14 generations, from David to the going out of, to the Babylon exile, 14 generations, and then from the Babylon exile to Christ is 14, 14, 14, 14. Well, you know, when Jews hear that, they're going, what? Now, why is 14 really important to Matthew? It's humongous. Why? Because 14 is the number of King David. Every Hebrew letter, this is called gematria, every Hebrew letter has a number associated with it. So David in Hebrew is Dalet Vav Dalet. Incidentally, the, the name David appears more frequently in the Hebrew Bible than any other name, more than Moses. Okay. So David is 14. So Matthew, this is not like Matthew just saying 14, 14, 14. Matthew is going bang, that this is all pointing to, to Christ. The problem, what Matthew did is, this is a Las Vegas show. This is a, this is a magic show. This is a this sleight of hand. He literally blows out four generations. Just They're just not there. He actually takes out one too many. So the whole thing is complete sleight of hand. Moving further, we then come to Matthew one twenty three. Would well, we're told by the author that Jesus was born to a virgin as a fulfillment of what it says in Isaiah. Isaiah, just so you know, lived seven hundred years before Jesus. Okay, Isaiah lived during the Assyrian Empire. But when we go back to that passage, we're going what? It doesn't say virgin there, and it's taken out of context, and the articles are changed. It's all a mess. This is not accidents. This is not, you know, this is not oops. This is very deliberately done. And this is the kind of stuff that if you're an attorney in the United States and you do this with a contract, you get disbarred for it, and you go to jail for fraud. Okay? 
I mean, do I need to go further on this? I mean, in Matthew 2, 13 through 15, we're told that the family, which is from Bethlehem, not from the, as, as we're told in Luke, um, has to flee to Egypt because Herod is seeking to kill the kid. And they go down to Egypt. I mean, Mary, Joseph, and Jesus go down to Egypt to fill what was spoken of the Lord by the prophet saying, out of Egypt have I called my son, Matthew chapter 2, verse 15. Well, if you have a Christian study Bible, cross-reference that to Hosea chapter 11, verse 1. The text actually says, when Israel was a child, then I loved him, and out of Egypt have I called my son. Like, what? Like, how did you just rip that out of context? So Jews are incredibly offended by this. I mean, this is molesting the text. This is not... This is not a mistake. This is not, you know, someone who, no, this is very deliberately done. I can go on if you want, but the way the Jews are characterized in Matthew 1 and 2 would, I remember as a kid, I was, what, 16, 17 when I read the Christian Bible the first time? And, of course, I'm, I'm beginning with Matthew because, you know, Augustine wanted to make sure that Matthew appears first. You know, and I'm just reading this the way the Jews are portrayed. I mean, I mean, if you're going to portray the Jews or any ethnic group in this way, of course people are going to be offended. I mean, are you insane? So if, you're, if you portray the Jews, I remember just reading this infancy narrative, I don't know, maybe I was 17 years old in a King James, and the story portrays is mind-blowing that, <clears throat> that Herod finds out that the king of the Jews was born in Bethlehem. This is in Matthew chapter 2, verse 6, okay? And Herod doesn't like that idea because he was the king of the Jews in his view. And then he sets off to kill the kid. Meanwhile, you have Magi, Magi, who presumably what's in view is some Persian uh, group of non-Jews. They're coming from the east. Let's just say Persia, okay? And they're, that means they're not Jewish. And when they find little Jesus following the star to Jerusalem and then to Bethlehem, they worship the kid. They bring gifts for the kids. I mean, think of the reason why they think there are three is because there are three gifts. We don't really know no number of people. So here you have the setup. I mean, the, the Jews, upon hearing that the Messiah was born in Bethlehem, want to kill the kid and, in fact, kill every child in Bethlehem that's two years old and younger. And the non-Jews want to worship the kid. I mean, like, of course Christians hate us. Of course they do. To you, to you Christians that don't hate Jews, I like tip my hat to you. Because if I was raised on the New Testament, if that's all I read, and I read nothing else, I would hate me. I would think, what kind of people is this? So this is very much from the get-go. Matthew, in my view, is far more anti-Jewish than John. And, and there's debate over this. But Ma this is all a setup that here we have the Jews and the Gentiles both observing the same circumstances, and one of them wants to kill the Messiah, and the other one wants to worship the Messiah. Bingo. I mean, of, co of course the non-Jews hate it. Of course the Christian world despises us. If they read this kind of, this kind of, this screed, and of course they're going to draw that conclusion. I don't know love, I'm <laughs> 